Welcome to the Building Up Women in Property podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Bangura, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today. This podcast is for ambitious women who work in property and construction, who want to learn how to have a career they love on their terms. Join me every week where I'll leave you excited and confident to take your next steps. Thanks for being here with me. Now let's get started. Hello, welcome back. We are continuing our conversation today about creating sustainable habits. If you haven't checked out last week's episode, I just want to suggest pop me on hold, go back and listen to that one first. Because what we are talking about in this is really understanding how we create habits, what our brain needs in order to create long term results. We break down the elements of habits to understand what our brain is doing, what the triggers are, what we need in order to create long-term sustainable habits that will create massive results in our careers and in our lives and will really set us up for long-term success. There is a workbook as well that accompanies these episodes. Grab your copy in the show notes and don't listen to these episodes passively. I want you to take these away and get into action. I really hope that from last week's episode, you've sat down and really gotten clear on what it is that you want to achieve. What is the goal you are working towards? And then mapped out all of those possible behaviors that could contribute to achieving that goal. And then work those out on the matrix. Where do they sit in terms of their impact and how achievable they are for you? I'm hoping you have all of that with you today because now we're actually going to get into committing to those habits and what you need to do in order to set yourself up for success. Because there are some do's and don'ts of habits. Not all habits are created equal. And we touched on this last week, but the most important thing is it needs to be something that you will actually do, right? You need to have the trigger and then be willing and capable of taking the action. We want to achieve big things in 2023. And I want you to end the year being a different person to who you are right now. These habits are what will get you there. And it's about applying these consistently over the course of the next 6, 12 months. That is where that exponential growth happens when you are willing to do this. And what we really need to be conscious of as we create these sustainable habits for ourselves is firstly to stop judging yourself. There are so many things that get caught up in the stories of what we think we should be able to do. And, you know, a great example of this is if you've ever tried to lose weight, you know what to do. Eat less, exercise more. It's a simple equation. But still, there are things that come up and we struggle with elements of that. And we really need to just let go of all of the guilt, all of the judgment, because the reality is that is not helping you move forward right towards your goals, is actually keeping you stuck. So what I want you to do instead is increase your self-awareness and get conscious and actually start to effectively evaluate what's working and what isn't. And for example, you know, on that list of behaviors and where you've mapped it out in the matrix, you might pick something that's a high impact. An example of that might be, I'm going to work from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. And at 6 p.m., my laptop goes away, right? I'm not working anymore. I said, that is a habit I'm trying to cultivate. But then, oh, look up, it's 6.30 and I'm still working away. What if we actually get curious about what happened there, right? Because I had the ability to shut my laptop, I have complete control over doing that, but I didn't do it. So we want to think about what happened, really interrogate it and evaluate it. Maybe I had a deadline, Or maybe I've been asked for some specific information. Or perhaps I was taking leave the next day and I wanted to just finish something so I could have a break without thinking about it. Get curious and really get into this constant pattern of evaluating. And a good way to think about this is asking yourself these three questions. What worked? What didn't work? And what would I do differently? And that will give you the fuel to then adjust the behaviors so that you can keep moving forward. And that is really the key. And now the second thing is I don't want you to rely on motivation. 
Now, as I said last week, motivation is great in the moment when we have it, but it fails us most of the time, right? It's not just you. It's really just the nature of it. So what we want to do is really focus on making habits and behaviors that we are completely able and capable of achieving. And we want them to be as easy as possible. I'll talk about prompts a bit more in a moment, but we want to just recognize that we can do that action and have the minimal resistance to it. So this often means starting really small with a habit, smaller than we even think we should. But starting small builds the muscle and we want to set ourselves up for success, not for failure, because success will promote more action than failure will. So get curious, evaluate, and then adjust your habits to make them as easy as possible with minimal resistance. Another big one is I don't want you to try and do everything at once. And this is kind of where we go back to these New Year's resolutions. We're like, oh, okay, it's 1st of January and I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to eat better and I'm going to work less and I'm going to get a promotion and I'm going to get a pay rise and I'm going to do more hobbies and I'm going to see my friends more. And we try and do everything. And what happens is we end up failing for the simple reason that we've just put too much on our plate and we don't know what we're focused on. It is unachievable. So what we want to do is focus on little things with a consistent goal, right? Because little things is how we will get the most progress and it is how we will get the most sustained growth and the results will be the outcomes that we want. And I also want you to be thinking about how you are tracking your progress. So actually really check in with yourself periodically and depending on what you're working towards, you know, those periods might be different, right? It might be daily, it might be weekly, it might be monthly. But really do have a formal mechanism for tracking your progress so that you can see where you've come from. Because with habits, really, you know, it's about tweaking these things each day and that's what's getting us the long-term results. So it's easy with that sort of sustained long-term progress to not recognize it when we look back. So really do track your progress. Now, I know I keep hammering on about this, but I really want you to get clear on what it is you want and why it matters to you. And this is that result you're working towards. This is that big thing. And don't even think about the specific habits at the moment. Just think about what is it that you want and what are you driven by? What is the motivation, the big picture motivation? And going back to my example of like working less hours, the reason I wanted that was so that I had more control over my life and so that I had better health and a better sense of well-being and better relationships. That was what was important to me. It was how do I find the balance of all of those things. And when I connected to that motivation, it's very different to saying I just want to work nine to five or nine to six. It's very different. And knowing our why allows us to really step into the identity. I wanted to become someone who had a work-life balance and who was good at their job, but also had relationships outside of work and didn't always feel exhausted. So that's really crucial to this process. And it takes time to do this exercise, but give yourself the space to link your bigger picture to what it is you want and make it visible for yourself. So create a vision board, put a reminder on your phone, have something stuck to your laptop, make it front of mind so you know why these habits are important because it will allow you to really anchor to those. I hope you've been enjoying the episode. I wanted to take a moment to let you know about my free Career Confidence Masterclass. This is for ambitious career oriented women who are ready to stop playing small and to confidently create a career you love. Head over to my website, beautifuldisruptions.com for more info. Now let's get back to the episode. And now sort of going back to those specific habits and behaviors, you want to make them as easy as possible. And the example I always use is if you want to run a marathon or you want to become a runner, the first step is committing to putting on your shoes every day. Even if you don't get out the door, do the little thing, that one step of putting on your shoes, you keep repeating that and it will build. And slowly you'll start to step outside the door and you'll start to walk up the road. And then you walk around the block and then you might start jogging the block and then you might 
start jogging a little further and it will all build on each other, right? It's that compounding effect. But what you want to do is get the quick wins under your belt so that you can start building momentum and keep progressing and moving forward. Okay, this tip is super important and it's about finding good prompts. So we've spoken a little bit about prompts already. This is like, what is it that will actually get you to do the action? Right, so a prompt is the trigger. It is the cue and it can be anything. And this kind of ties into the next one around, you know, building on existing habits and routines that you have. So a prompt is, I will do this when this happens at this place. Right, so I will meditate for one minute at 7 a.m. every morning. That is my prompt. And in order to make that easier, I will set a reminder on my phone. The prompt is the time. I've made it as easy as possible because my phone has a reminder and then I've got one minute to go. And another important thing to think about is how does this fit into your existing routines? Because we all have routines. Usually in the mornings we have a really established routine and a great way to really build habits in and cement them into your life is to look at how you can stick a habit into an existing structure and routine that works. So an example of this might be in the mornings, I will get up, I will go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, make my cup of coffee. Then I sit down for one minute and meditate. And then what we can do from there is we can continue to add in habits. So we can then either expand the habit. So my meditation practice could go from one minute to five minutes or 10 minutes. Or, you know, I might say, I've got that one minute meditation down pat. So on top of that, I'm going to jot down my top three priorities after I've done my one minute meditation in my journal. So that's called habit stacking. And that's where you build one habit on top of another, right? And again and again, just consciously working at this will really create that sustained progress for you. And it doesn't need to be complex. It doesn't need to be hard. It just needs to be consistent. And the final thing I want to say on this is you need to be acknowledging your wins and really focus on feeling good. And that can be as simple as just having, you know, a personal signal that you do each time you complete, you know, a desired action, right? So it might be like clicking your fingers or clapping your hands or just, you know, yes, fist pump, you know, that mental high five, or it might be something visible, or it might be something you do in your mind, right? Or it could be enrolling the help of someone close to you and actually doing a high five, but you want to make it very deliberate and intentional that you acknowledge each win because your neural pathways in your brain, they respond to that. They get a dopamine hit and your brain will start to build on those success pathways. That's why they're called success pathways. Your brain recognizes them. And as I said before, your brain loves to repeat behaviors. That's why it loves habits. So we want to cultivate the right ones. And that's why focusing on feeling good is so important, right? That dopamine, that will motivate you. And I tell you, if you apply these tips and get intentional with what you are creating and what your actions are, you will create some amazing habits that will literally shift your life. So really practice them. Get curious, keep it simple and keep focused on your big picture and celebrate yourself on the way. Now, before we go, I want to wrap up with one final thought. And this is about high performance habits. And what I mean by that is this is when you are operating from your zone of genius. And that is where, you know, your natural talents and your strengths and your skills, they all intersect. So this is where you are actually doing the things that you love to do and that you're really good at because we can commit to achieving results in any area of our life that we don't have natural ability in. And of course, you know, we can absolutely get results there. But if we want to make it easier and be the absolute best of the best, it makes sense to work with what we do well and what we are interested in and in the areas we are consciously wanting to evolve and grow in. And that is ultimately, you know, our zone of genius. And the other thing is really around embodying that desired identity. So the identity that I used before was of someone being well-balanced and well-rounded in my life or being a runner, right? When you start to say, I am a runner, then you start to put your shoes on and you go for a run. Or even if you go for a walk, but you get out of the door because that is who you are being. That is who you are. 
And so you've got to feel that. You've got to own that and really make the commitment to being that person. And, you know, once you do that, it almost just drives the actions on its own. You know, and even if this idea of zone of genius doesn't make sense to you yet, and, you know, I will actually link to another episode on this, but I want you just to be focused on the right things. What is going to shift the dial for you? What is going to create the wins? And if you're not entirely sure what the most effective thing to do is, if you want to move towards your goal or your result, just start. So just keep that in mind and, you know, be aware that this is a constant process. And if you really want to be a high performer in your career, in your life, in any area, you need to commit to doing the work and showing up day in, day out. And, you know, they talk about boredom is the biggest enemy because we as humans, we work best when we are on that cusp of what we can do and what we think we're capable of. So it's not working within our comfort zone. It's working a bit out of our comfort zone, but not so far that we freak out, right? But we want to keep up in the ante. We want to keep getting better. So start with putting on your shoes, go for the walk and then progress that jog and then jog a little further, right? And then we'll start running and we'll start running further and further. So this is just constantly moving the needle just a little bit further so that we don't get bored, so that we don't get complacent and we keep evolving. And my final thing on high performance is that rest and self-care need to be part of your daily routine. And I really want to leave you with this thought because you have to be really brave to do this, to actually create these habits. And as I said, you know, it is really about working intentionally and sometimes it means going against social norms or challenging the status quo. And that really does require you to be brave and courageous and to keep showing up because there'll be some days that things don't go according to plan, right? Where your habits slip or you don't get the outcome you desired within the timeframes you wanted. And I want to invite you to keep showing up, keep doing the work. Some days won't be your best, right? Others will be fantastic, but it's a collective experience, right? Keep building on it. Keep getting better and better and commit to challenging yourself and your own personal growth and that evolvement to really hone your habits so that they support you to have the career and the lifestyle you want because it is ultimately what it's all about. And I want to leave you with this. If you are looking to really up level at work or in your life, then I want to invite you to actually, you know, come over to my website and book a coaching call with me. And we can actually talk about what your habits look like in your context and what the opportunities for growth and involvement are. Because when we talk about habits, let's be honest, it's all quite simple, but none of this is easy. Because first of all, we have to really create the possibility for ourselves of what it is we want to achieve and what that might look like. And then we have to actually implement the practices of doing it. And there will be slip-ups on the way. And believe me, we all have them, as I said. And coaching is a really good space to support you to step up in any area of your life and in your career if that's where you're looking to grow and evolve and to create long-term results. Embrace this. Take the bits that will help you fuel forward. Keep taking action. Keep building your identity and building your habits. All right, beautiful. Have an amazing day. Thanks for joining me on the Building Up Women in Property podcast. If you're listening on Apple Podcast or Spotify, I'd love for you to take a moment and review the show if you found it helpful or share it with a few friends. Thanks again. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.